Lumbar Spine Projections by Morgan, Hannah, Sierra, and Brandy. Your doctor could order a lumbar spine x-ray for many reasons. It can be used to view an injury from a fall or an accident. It can also be used to monitor a progression of a disease like osteoporosis or to determine if a treatment you're having is working. Some projections would be an AP lumbar projection, both obliques anterior or posterior, a lateral or a lateral L5-S1, also known as a spot. Correct positioning for an AP lumbar spine, you have to make sure that your patients don't have their legs crossed. Also, a really good thing for to decrease your magnification on your image is to flex the knees just a little bit. That puts your spine closer to your IR so you decrease OID. Some landmarks that a technologist should know is that the xiphoid process is at T9 and T10. Your iliac crest should be at L4 and L5 and your ASIS should be at S1 and S2. Another important landmark to know so we don't palpate the patient in the wrong area is a greater trochanter. You could find this area by rotating the patients in and out and that should put you at the level of the pubic symphysis. So we just got a work order. I look at the patient's name, their date of birth, how old they are, and if they're male or female. This patient is 22, so I'm gonna have to look up her labs and check if her pregnancy test came out negative before we do any radiation to her. They're negative, so now we're gonna go pick her up from the emergency room and bring her to the room. Ms. Romero, what's your first name? Morgan. Date of birth? 8, okay, the doctor ordered an AP lumbar spine, so we're going to go take those pictures, and your pregnancy test came out negative. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yes, that's a good thing. So, what brought you in today? Well, I was uh, on my roof, and I was taking down Christmas lights, and I fell. <gasps> Hard? Yes. <laughs> okay, Miss Morgan, we're going to transfer you onto the x-ray table, okay? to 75. Okay, Ms. Romero, take a deep breath, let it out, hold it out, don't breathe, and expose. Okay, Ms. Romero, you did awesome. We're going to go ahead and take you back to your room. I'm going to lower the stretcher. Is my back broken? I hope not, but I'm going to send those pictures to the radiologist, and then he'll let you know what's going on. I guess. Yes, ma'am. All right, you ready? Go ahead and put your arms across your chest. I'm falling. We got oh. you. Are you okay? Okay. Ready? I'm gonna pull the rest of the way. One, two, three. There we go. Got your feet on here. Also, very important, always 
make sure you put your rails up so your patient doesn't fall. Okay, we're gonna take you back to the emergency room, okay? okay. Send these x-rays to your doctor. this AP lumbar series, you should be able to see the lumbar vertebral bodies, intervertebral joints, and transverse processes. On this projection, you should be able to see T12 through S1. There should be no patient rotation and collimating to the area of interest. Always remember to put the right marker so this is the spinous process. You can see your sosa muscles, lumbar body number four and five, and even S1. You will also see your sacroiliac joints open, and you should be able to see the 12th rib, which is at the top of your image. On this image, the pathology should be of the lumbar vertebral, including fractures and scoliosis. I'm using a 14 by 17, and you want to make sure your Bucky is aligned around that 40 inches. So when we center it, it's going to be at the crest, but because she's obliqued, we have to move her a little bit towards me so we get all of the L spine. So from the crest, we're going to move about an inch or so medially. I'm going to put my right marker on. Looks good. So we're going to come over here. All right, I'm going to give you some breathing instructions. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. Blow it all out. And hold your breath. Expose. Go ahead and breathe. So now we're going to do the LPO. So we're going to do the same exact thing, but we're just going to do it on the other side. So I'm just going to take these sponges out from under you. So this time you're going to put this arm across your chest, you're going to bend this knee right, and I'm just going to place these sponges under you, oh, not too much. Okay. So again, we're going to use 14 by 17, we're at 40 inches. Still crest, I'm gonna go medially just a little bit. Okay, just like that. I'm gonna place my right marker right here. Okay, and I'm gonna give you the same breathing instructions, okay? Go ahead and take a deep breath in, blow it all out, and hold your breath. Expose. Go ahead and breathe. For your obliques for the lumbar spine, technical factors do KVP at 75 and mass at 40, and use a large focal spot. For the anterior and posterior obliques for the lumbar spine, the anatomy demonstrated is the visualization of the zygopophyseal joints. On a true 45 degree patient rotation, as indicated by open zygopophyseal joints, and the pedicle, which is the eye of the Scotty dog, between the midline and lateral aspect of the vertebral border. If the pedicle is demonstrated closer to the midline of the vertebral border and less of the pedicle is seen, this indicates over-rotation. If the pedicle is demonstrated laterally on the vertebral body border with more of the lamina, 
which is the body of the Scotty dog. This indicates under rotation. On a true oblique of the lumbar spine, you can see the Scotty dog. The head and neck of the dog are the easiest features to recognize. The neck is the pars interarticularis, which is part of the lamina that primarily makes up the shoulder region of the dog. The ear of the dog is the superior articular process, whereas the eye is formed by the pedicle. The transverse process forms the nose, and the front legs of the Scotty dog are formed by the inferior articular process. <laughs> For example, when the leg of L4 meets with the ear of L5, a zygopophyseal joint is formed. Clinical indications for the posterior and anterior oblique positions are defects of the pars articularis. Make sure you include both right and left oblique projections. Mr. Gage? For the lateral position of the lumbar spine, the intervertebral foramina L1 through L4, vertebral bodies, intervertebral joints, spinous processes, and L5 through S1 junction should be shown. Depending on the IR size, the entire sacrum may also be included. No rotation is indicated by superimposed greater sciatic notches in posterior vertebral bodies. Although the average male patient requires no CR angulation, a patient with a wider pelvis and a narrow thorax may require a 5 to 8 degree caudate angle even with support. If the patient has scoliosis of the spine, the patient should be placed in whichever lateral position places the convexity of the spine down to open the intervertebral spaces. Clinical indications for this projection include pathology of the lumbar vertebrae including fractures, spondylolisthesis, neoplastic processes, and osteoporosis. This image shows the pedicles of L2, the intervertebral foramina of L2, L3, intervertebral joint between L3, L4, the body of L4, the articular processes of L5 through S1, the sacrum, and the greater sciatic notches.
brought you in today? I fell. You fell? I was at the mall. At the mall? And I was looking at the oh. window. I'm so sorry. I know. I wasn't paying attention and I just fell. You fell. Over myself. Well, we're going to be taking an x-ray of your uh, lumbar spine, your lower back. And my name is Morgan, by the way. Okay, let me lock this for you. We're going to get you onto the table, okay? Okay, I can stand up myself. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Make sure you don't hit your head. Oh, okay. I moved it out of the way for you. Ow. Oh. You okay? Oh, oh yeah, that hurts. Oh. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you have a 10 by 12 IR inside the bucky. And you also want to make sure that you have a five to eight to five to eight degree angle cod ad. So you want to make sure that your bucky is aligned with the tube. And then you're gonna go and straighten out your patient. I'm sorry, ma'am. And make sure that they have their hands in the praying position. Good job, ma'am. You already know. I'm going to kind of push you forward, I'm sorry. And then you are going to feel for the crest, and you're going to go two inches below the crest. So, here. And you want to go an inch and a half behind the mid coronal. And so you want to make sure you call me. So, but you still want to include and make sure that the light skims the back, that way you don't flip anything. And in this view, in the lateral spot, you are trying to see the joint between L5 and S1. And you want to also make sure you have the lead mat behind them to pick up any scatter that may be in the room. And you want to make sure that you put your left marker in the upper left corner. Okay, ma'am, I'm just going to give you some breathing instructions. Basically, you're just going to hold your breath, okay, when I tell you to. Okay. Okay. So hold your breath, ma'am. And expose. And for the lateral spot, what technique you want to use is you want to use an 85 kVp and a 50 mass. And you want to use a large focal spot. In the lateral L5 to S1 position, also known as the lumbar spot, the anatomy demonstrated is L5 vertebral body, the first and second sacral segments, and L5 through S1 joint space. You can tell there is no rotation in the patient by superimposition of greater sciatic notches and posterior borders of the vertebral bodies. Correct alignment of the vertebral column and CR are indicated by an open L5 to S1 joint space. Make sure to always put the correct marker. In this situation, you would put your left. Clinical indications of the lateral spot include spondylolisthesis involving L4 to L5 or L5 to S1 and other L5 to S1 pathologies. Great tech. Don't be a lazy one. Wake up! <laughs> the patient's on the loose! The patient's on the loose! Hey, security! Security! <laughs> Is there any chance of pregnancy? I don't know. <sighs> <laughs> All right, ma'am, you're all good. You can get up now. Good? <laughs> <laughs>